We're gonna get started here. People come late, then come late. Let me know if you can see the slide and hear me. Okay, good. <laughs> thanks, Kathy, thanks for having me today. So today is the day before the election day, which is strange because in the US, I know some of you are in the US, some of you are not, the presidential election is tomorrow, it's November 3rd, but they've had early voting for weeks now in most states. So it's kind of a weird year because of COVID. And also mo a lot of people are doing mail-in ballots. So one of the other things that's strange about this year is <coughs> we may not know who wins by tomorrow night, which you usually do, or Wednesday, you usually know. We might, we might not, okay? So tonight I thought it'd be good to do a webinar. I'm going to go through my webinar. I'm going to go through my lecture. I'm going to talk about the strategy I trade, which is gaps. But, bef but before I do, um, I'm going to give you a little bit of insight. And for those of you that don't know, I live in New York City, into how I think this whole thing is going to play out. Now, what I, what I do is related to gaps. And again, we're, I'm going to go through the webinar <laughs> that I have here for tonight to talk about my strategy, how you can use it to trade. If you're interested, you can do a trial for the room this week. You can email me afterwards for a trial. Kathy, put my email in the room, please. Um, and I have a class coming up this weekend. But one of the things that I think is so, or actually I've noticed, particularly in the last two weeks, I'd say, maybe even the last month is, the way that I read a chart, okay, a, a, a day chart, okay, is based on technical analysis of gaps, and it's really led me in, a, in, in the absolutely correct direction to play this market in the last few weeks, when it has confused a lot of people. So a lot of people were not shorting the market in the last month, I'd say, and, and we've been shorting the market actually for the last two months, quite frankly. And a lot of people were going long. So how did I read this so well? And how did I predict it ahead of time? I'm just talking about this pre-election period, the, up, the running up to it, which was really September and October. It's because of the way that I read gaps. And again, I'm going to go over what a gap is in a minute here when we get into the webinar. But <laughs> what's going to happen tomorrow could be very similar to what happened today in the market. The market may be back and forth. Look like it's moving higher, not really go anywhere. Look like it's going lower, not really go anywhere. Because again, we're not going to know anything tomorrow. Tomorrow's election day. So I'm looking at Monday and Tuesday of this week, which pretty much played out the way, the way I thought today um, as rest days. Rest days in the market. Actually, let me pull up the market here. Hold on. Let me just pull up my charts. I'm talking here. I don't want this up. Um, so this is a spot. Actually, talk about a rest day. Is that right? Did we close? Holy crap. We closed neutral today. I didn't even notice that because I was busy. Wow. Talk about a rest day. Look at that. I didn't even realize that. We closed exactly where we opened in the market. That's very unusual. Wow. That's really unusual. Let me look at the queues. Um, we closed slightly red in the queues. Slightly running the queues. Amazon sold off today. Uh, we did one trade today, which I saw early that I wasn't going to do it. And I said, why am I sitting here? I know this is going to go. We did a put in Amazon today. It worked. It was a nice trade. Um, so this helped to drag those queues down, which was why the QQQs were red. But the SPY closed neutral. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying. Um, let's say, for example... There's different scenarios, and I won't know how I'm going to play the market until I get up in the morning and look at the market, because what I do is I rate gaps, and I rate gaps in the pre-market. So there's things gap at night, things gap in the morning, they gap after hours, but I usually wait to the morning to determine what I'm doing. So I have a system. If you come and you learn from me, you learn it, okay? You learn how I do it, and I do it in the pre-market. I determine what I'm going to do on the day whether I'm going to go long, whether I'm going to short, and I determine it based on the gap. Now, what is a gap? A gap is a difference between the close and the open. So here on 1027, this is the SPY. The SPY closed at 338.22, opened in the morning at 332.10. Closed here, gap down, boom. So I got up in the morning, I rated this gap. I knew it would fall, and then we played it. 
Okay, this was on 1028. So we'll go over some of those trades in the webinar here in a minute. But anyways, that's what I'm gonna do this week. However, there are a couple scenarios that I think could play out. Say for example, we don't know who wins. I expect a extremely uh, negative meaning, not necessarily selling, but negative meaning volatility, uh, which, which people believe is negative. Volatility meaning unexpected reaction by the market if we don't know who wins by Wednesday. So if this drags on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, if by the end of the week the market doesn't know who is president, there will be extreme volatility in that three-day period. It doesn't mean we're going to have a hard sell-off, although we could. It doesn't mean we're going to have a hard rally, although we could. It will be an extremely volatile period. What is volatility? It means you think something's going in one direction and it goes in the other direction and vice versa. Do you know what I'm saying? So that really is what sometimes trips traders up because the market is going to be confused. Do you understand what I'm saying here? If we don't know who wins. So it will be better for the market if we have an answer by Wednesday. Now, if we don't have an answer until Friday, that's still three days of trading. Again, we could see volatility Wednesday, Thursday, and into Friday. And if we don't have an answer by the end of Friday, I mean, I have no idea what we're going to look like until next week, and I won't know till really uh, until Friday. So it is a very interesting year for so many reasons to be participating in the election. And I think more people than ever are going to be voting. If you live here, you need to go out and vote. Um, I have not voted yet. I'm going to vote in person tomorrow. Um, but here's my take on this. Take what you will from this, what I'm going to tell you right now. This is my opinion, okay, based on information I'm going to give you. I see Irv here. Irv was in the room this morning. I said this. I'm going to give you my opinion here now so you can take it for what it's worth. In my opinion, Trump's going to win. Now, why am I saying that? One of the highly contested states is Pennsylvania. I'm from Pennsylvania. Uh, Trump's been out there a lot. I know Biden's been out there too campaigning, but there's an entire group of voters that's going to vote in Pennsylvania that have never voted before. It's something that I haven't heard anyone discuss, but if I'm on TV in the next two, three days, or even later this week, I will bring it up. The Mennonite and Amish that live in Pennsylvania typically don't vote, and some have never voted. It's a huge amount of people, and they're going to vote, and they're going to vote for Trump. Trump passed some kind of uh, tax credit to help or tax break for farmers, for Amish and Mennonite farmers in Pennsylvania. They were at some of the rallies. If you watch TV, you saw them. It's been known locally and no one's really talking about it and they're not being polled. And I forget which, which one, if it's Amish or Mennonite, one of them doesn't have electricity, so they don't even have any phones to call and poll, but they're new voters, so no one will be polling them anyways. They'd be newly registered voters. So there's a huge amount of people in Pennsylvania that are new voters they are going to vote for Trump that no one is even counting or polling. Does everyone understand what I'm saying? So I think Trump's going to win Pennsylvania, which, which the pollsters are saying he needs to win and could take him over the edge. So that's one of the reasons why I think that Trump's going to win. And that's just because, again, locally I know what's going on in Pennsylvania. The second reason that I think Trump's going to win is because I live in New York and the city is bracing for the most violence that I've ever I've ever seen the city brace for. The city would not be doing this if it thought that Biden was going to win because New York, where I live in Manhattan, is a blue state and will go for Biden like it always goes for the Democrats. Um, and they would be partying in the streets if Biden won. Since Saturday in New York City, all the stores, all along the main main streets, all on the main roads, even some of the even some of the uh, smaller streets, are boarding up and preparing for massive amounts of unrest, in in a way that I have not seen. Now I was here during the riots and everything back in June. That was a mess. But this is like more than I've ever seen. Like every single statue is surrounded by some kind of enclosure where they boarded it up or made some kind of thing like people are preparing days in advance businesses are telling employees in new york city they don't have to come to work on wednesday they're letting their employees out early on tuesday thursday's up in the air this is this is unheard of and this is businesses you know that are open i mean where people are coming into work and coming in they're brace the city is bracing for massive violence so that tells me trump's going to win too because the people that were uh, doing the violence back in the summer 
the rioting was the anarchists and they'd be partying if Biden was going to win. So that's another sign that I think Trump's going to win. Biden could win. Biden could win. He could. I could be wrong, but that's my two cents and I just told you why. So now let's go over the two scenarios. What would the market do if Biden won? What do you think it would do? Well, in my opinion, if we, and this is again, not if this drags out for days and days and weeks and weeks. This is like if we find out by Wednesday, either it's a landslide Biden or a landslide Trump, whatever you want to call it. That, I think that's the only way we're going to know Wednesday, to be honest with you. It's got to be a landslide in some, some way on either end to find out immediately, <laughs> which again, would, I think would be better for the country to know. But anyways, say it's a, it's a Biden victory, say he wins. I think the market will hold the uptrend because most of the life of the market, the market isn't an uptrend. This is the market. And again, just look at the spy today. Most of the life of the market's in an uptrend. This is going back 2004. I can go back to 1999 here. There is very few times when the market does break in a downtrend. Yes, it's ha it happens. It actually happened earlier this year with COVID, but it's not often. So what, what you could see is a quick, fast sell-off that could last a day or maybe a little bit and then a reversal. So like you could see a negative reaction, which is a sell-off if Biden wins. I'm talking about within the 24-hour period though, not like two weeks from now, do you understand? So you could see a sell-off, a quick sell-off and then a reversal. I don't think we're gonna break trend uh, if Biden wins. I don't think we're gonna break trend if Trump wins, but if Trump wins, that's the most bullish case for the scenario, why? You see more brand new all-time highs during Trump, uh, Trump's presidency in the last four years than you've seen ever, ever before. While the market is in an uptrend most of the time, you've seen more brand new all-time highs since he was president that you've ever seen, that I've ever seen, that it has ever happened. And that's just a fact. You can look at a chart, you can go back, you can count them all if you want. In fact, I should count them all. I could say it next time I'm on, I'm on somewhere. But where would we, if this is again the first 24 hours, say Wednesday, where would the market gap up? If, it, if Trump wins and the market wants to react positively, um, where could we go? I don't know, but it could be a big gap up. Like it could be, like I'm just saying, pretend tomorrow will be Wednesday, 340, you know, 340. I mean, who the heck knows? Could even be 350. That kind of stuff can happen. That's the market. Okay, so we could have a massive gap up, a very bullish move. If Trump wins, it could take us over the high. If not that day, within the coming week. So that is kind of how I'm seeing that that could play out if in fact Trump wins. Again, both of these scenarios are only if we know on Wednesday, because if we don't have an answer of who wins by Wednesday, expect volatility Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and every single solitary day until we do know. And then I think it will, whatever the reaction will be with whoever the vic victor is will be muted muted, meaning not as big of a reaction as you would see as Wednesday. So for example, like say, I hope everyone's listening to what I'm saying because I'm trying to get everything out that's in my head as quickly as I can. And I know I talk fast, but my brain works fast. So I have to just get it out while my brain is working this fast or I'm not gonna be able to remember what I said because I'm just like, I'm just in the groove here of spitting this out. Let's just say November 15th or something we find out. The reaction would be muted. So you wouldn't see a big gap up with a Trump victory. You wouldn't see a sell off with a Biden victory and so on and so forth. Do you know what I'm saying? And the reason that I'm attributing the sell off to Biden and the rally to Trump for the immediate reaction is that Trump's policies and his tax cuts and credits and the lack of regulation have helped the market and the market has had more bullish moves during the Trump presidency. It's, you just have to look at it. Now again, Biden was never president to be able to compare but Biden has come flat right out and said that he's gonna raise taxes on people that make over 400,000 a year, which affects small businesses, still affects people that work many families with kids. And also uh, he has said that he would consider shutting down the country again if the experts say that, he, he, that they want to. And that I think is something that the market doesn't want. And particularly some of these industries that have been hit really hard. In fact, we'll, we'll pull up here Boeing, which I've been bearish on for quite some time. But I, uh, the irony is we didn't play this last week on the earnings. It didn't set up the way I wanted to, but it just still sold off. You have, you have, these are in trouble. These airlines are in trouble. They're in trouble if they don't get stimulus help between now and the end of the year, it's gonna be more round of layoffs. And again, this is not, I'm just saying fundamentally, technically speaking, these charts are in a downtrend. Um, and, and, and I've been saying that for a while, Boeing included. 
I was just going to say something else and I forgot. Does anybody have any questions so far of everything I just said? Anyone? Um, so I think that this week, if you don't know what you're doing, it's going to be tricky to trade. If you know what you're doing, do it because it's going to have opportunity. Luckily, I know what I'm doing. Okay. And so the people that are with me, listen to what I say. But honest to God, if you don't know what you're doing this week, well, first of all, you shouldn't trade if you don't know what you're doing at any point in time. But if you don't know what you're doing this week, you definitely should just wait, wait it out. Step aside. And we weren't going to do anything today. And then I saw the Amazon and it was only an option. We didn't do any day trades today. Market was not along today, despite the fact it gapped up. So <laughs> does anyone have any questions here before I go to the PowerPoint? And I'll go back and forth to the charts. Um, Hello, am I here? No one's writing anything. Kathy, let me know I'm here. Galahad, no one is writing a darn thing. And either all of you are mesmerized by everything I'm saying or you're asleep. <laughs> it's one or the other. <clears throat> it's one or the other. Okay, you hear me. Okay. No one has any questions, any comments, anything. <clears throat> so those are the scenarios. So let's talk about markets in the election. Let's talk about what I do. Let's talk about how I can figure out where the market's going and how I could even make the statements that I just made about how I'm predicting the market direction and what I think based on the outcomes. Um, if you have questions, you can email me at melissaatthestockswish.com. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest, or Skype. Oh, Court D has a question. Go ahead. Okay. So what's going to happen to the market with the election? I just told you. This was the first slide. So I just told you that when I was talking about the chart. I just told you. We're going to rest today. We did. We're going to rest tomorrow. And then we're going to see what the outcome is. Um, remember back in 2016, I don't know if anybody remembers that. I do. I do because I was in, I was in overnight calls. I was in options that were in calls, and I was I was then upset because the market was down big then at night, but then when I got up in the morning, it was up. So anyways, I was at one point, I was down in a trade, but, but I was in the middle of the night, and then I got up and then the trade was up. <laughs> so that was like a weird scenario. But remember the outcome 2016, the market was down huge and it reversed. And again, as things were changing, I do not change the trade the futures. I don't trade the pre-market. I don't trade the post-market. I trade during the live day between 9.30 and 4. I think you have the best moves during that time. And I think it's, uh, I use the pre-market and the post-market time to predict those moves in the live day. So that's, that's what I do. But that kind of thing, you know, again, we may or may not see this year, depending on how the night's going for how the numbers are coming in. So anyways, we're getting into, well, I really wouldn't say it's the middle of the year. It's, it's towards the end of the year now, really. We only have two, less than two more months. Well, two more months. Today's November 2nd, first day of the month. And I think a lot of people have had a year that they never anticipated, myself included, just what's happening in New York and, and everything that's going on. So I think it's a good time to evaluate getting into change of seasons. It's now starting to be winter here in New York. Are you doing what you want to be doing? You know, a lot of people are working from home. They have time to trade. If you're one of those people, you thought about trading, you want to get involved, and you're working from home now, whereas before you weren't, you might want to jump into it. You might want to start doing it. Um, I do think it's important to enjoy what you do every day. Personally, I really love reading charts. I do love making money too. And that's part of the fun of trading because every day you don't know how much you're going to make. One day you can make way more than you think or that you anticipate you're going to make. And it surprises you. I was saying this too in the room earlier. Any more for me, trading is not hard. Sometimes I have hard days, but trading is not hard for me anymore. But sometimes I have hard days, but it doesn't mean that reading the stock, reading the market or trading is hard. I have a hard day sometimes, but so does anybody in any career and anything you do. I think a lot of traders have a negative attitude where they feel like trading is hard. If you're one of those people and you feel like trading's hard, then my guess is you're losing money. And the reasons for that is you don't know what to do. When you know what to do, trading is easy. When you don't know what to do, trading is hard. 
simple. It's like if someone told me that I had to go out and play football. I have no idea how to play football. I don't even understand it to watch it on TV what the plays mean. I know when you get a touchdown, it's six points or maybe it's seven. I don't even know. I know nothing about football. And somebody told me how to go out and play football tomorrow, I wouldn't know what to do. And I, and I would find it very hard. So you have to learn what to do to do anything, whether it's a sport, whether it's a job, anything, okay? That's common sense. Why people think they can risk money in the market and trade or invest without any knowledge or system or a mentor, I think is absurd. But there are many people that trade that feel that they don't need the support, that they don't need a strategy, that they can just take trades aimlessly, watching stuff on TV or listening to people. You will fail ultimately doing that. While some days you might make money, in the end, in the long haul, you'll lose, okay? Once you know what to do, it's easy. When you don't know what to do, it's hard. So if you find it, it to be hard to train, you don't know what to do, okay? Now, one of the things also is that time is the best thing that you can give yourself, meaning the longer you train one system, as long as it's a system that works, the better you're gonna get at it. So one of the things that I attribute to my own personal success is that I've been doing this in nothing but gaps, that's all that I do. I've been doing nothing but gaps since I started. So it's going on 12, 13 years. So it took me three years to create my system, but I've never strayed from this idea that gaps really can help you predict what's going to happen in the market. And the gaps are very profitable where you can make a lot of money, like 20000 a month or 40000 a month or 200000 a month if you have the money to risk it. The idea of gaps to me was something that I always stuck on. So the more you do something, the better you get. If you're new to trading or if you come to me and you're new to gaps, give yourself the time to learn it and do it. Start out small size till you start to begin to trade and get used to it. And, and again, whatever problems you have, I can do my best to help you get over them. I truly believe that anybody that has difficulties with this can get over them, can get over the hump. How long that takes you, though, I don't know because, again, everybody's different. Every person is different. Some people come to me, they're brand, brand new, they don't know a thing. Some people know a lot. But if somebody could know how to trade and been trading for longer than I'm alive and still have a lot of questions and not understand things because they're used to doing things that are not the things that I do. You know what I mean? Because the things that I do are unique. And sometimes people have bad habits, and that's a problem too. Okay? Any questions here so far? So for me, I was looking for my dream career. It kind of just fell into my lap. Uh, trading. I just said, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to get out of mortgages. And I just said, let me do something where I can make a lot of money and work from home. Because I was working from home doing mortgages and I wanted to make a lot of money and I was doing that. So I needed to find a new job. And that was, like I said, a long time ago. The one thing that I think is great about trading is you can make as much as you can risk. Okay. What do I mean? Like how much should you risk for the size of your account? Ask me. But it's based on several factors. One, your knowledge, skill set. If you're more knowledgeable, you can risk more with a small account versus someone that doesn't know what they're doing. Two, your own personal risk tolerance, okay? So you may have 100 grand in an account, but if you're not comfortable even risking $1,000, even if you have 100 grand, you may not want to do that, okay? Once you get better and you start to do it and you get more comfortable, then you work yourself up. But someone that has a $10,000 in a prop account may be comfortable risking a thousand, even though that's 10% of the account, which is a lot less than a hundred thousand because of the fact that may, they may know what they're doing. Okay. So these factors are based on you as far as the percentage of risk. And you can always ask me what I think. Kathy, I don't know what the seven is there or if you meant to write something or a note, let me know. And again, if anybody has questions, let me know as we're going along here. But I definitely think it makes a difference when you're doing something that you love. And if you're gonna trade for a career, you gotta love reading charts, because that's a big part of what I do. It's technical analysis, and that's chart reading. And it's chart reading and gaps. If you like to make money, then obviously trading is fun too. And for me, I like fast money. Even when I take a trade on a Monday, say it's an options trade, if I'm out of that trade by Tuesday, or by even Thursday, that's still fast when you think about it. Back in the day when I did mortgages, you have no idea. Sometimes I would take a loan application from somebody in January, pre-approve them to buy a house. It would take them forever to find the house. Then they'd have to put in the offer in the house. Then they'd have to go through the process of the house. 
I could take an application from someone in January and they not they may the loan may not close till December and I don't get paid till January year, year year later. That's literally what that industry is like. So this to me is fast. Even if I even if I don't do a day trade, even if I'm doing an option and I'm holding it for five days or two weeks, that's still fast. But I do prefer the quick, fast day trades, and we're going to go over some of them here that we did last week too. But you know, you have weekends off. You know how much money you're making immediately. And again, all of this is very, very positive. Now, this was one of the day trades we did uh, last week. It was Microsoft. Microsoft was in earnings. So let's go over here again what a gap is. The stock gaps, when the close, which is different from the open, okay? So Microsoft closed here. Boom, 4 o'clock. Open in the morning. Boom, 9.30. Fell. Fell off a planet. So we did a day trade in Microsoft, okay? This is a day trade. You need buying power, you need margin to do a day trade, just so you know. This is not a, an ex, a cheap stock, it's kind of expensive. Again, if you don't know what margin is, let me know. There's two types of accounts. You can have a retail trading account or you can have a proprietary trading account to use on margin. Now you could have done an option in this too. If you wanted to save as far as the margin, options are not based on margin, they're cash accounts, okay? Anyways, we entered this here. It had this beautiful drop. So this was a short. This was a short. Risk in this was 25.56. Exit was close to the whole number. Dream target. Um, this actually ended up continuing. I'll pull up the chart in a minute. Profit was 3,720. So this is 10.28. Let me go over here right to the chart from Microsoft. So that's $2,500 risk thereabouts with a $3,700 profit. That is a good trade, okay? Let me pull this up. Oh, look at this today. I didn't even look at this today. And again, any questions, let me know. Hmm. This is taking forever. really is taking you forever. Okay. Everybody see this? This is the day that we did it, the 28th, and I the exit at 204. I really thought that that was a good exit there. It dropped another $2. This is insane. Low in the day is 202.10. And we had a discussion too about this in the room as well last week. Your goal in life should, and when you trade should not be to get out of every short at the low or every long at a high. It will be nearly impossible for you to achieve that. While sometimes we do, sometimes I do, um, the reality is I do the best I can and try to make money. And even here at this point, right around this 204, again, that was a fabulous amount of money and a good profit from the entry we had. But it dropped another $2. So that was crazy. Go back. So I discuss targets in the class. I discuss exit signs in the class. And again, what I do is gaps. So one of the reasons I think, again, gaps are powerful is because you have the big moves. You need big moves in stocks if you want to pay yourself on a regular, consistent basis enough to be able to do it as a career. You can't scalp, I don't think, um, successfully and really be able to get somewhere with it unless you take an, a, a, a really an absurd size and when you're, t if you would scalp stocks for 50, uh, 50 cents or not 50 cents, like 10 cents or 5 cents, where you'd have to take like 50,000 shares, that just becomes too risky. And people do that in low float stocks and cheap stocks. I do not. I do not trade any low float stocks. I think you're better off trading stocks in, in the, the price points, I'd say $5 or higher. Although we've done some of these ones here that, that were expensive, like the market and Microsoft, we'll do things that are 20 some dollars. We did Wells Fargo, okay? So you have to have a broad range, but I'm not doing anything that are dirt cheap. Now this was the same day where I thought everything would fall, which was Wednesday and it did. Again, the market, which was the QQQs gap down here, closed here, gap down. This is the continuation of the sell-off that we had been having back from since here. This is the beginning of October. Here's the sell-off. Well, it was a, was a second week of October, really. 
So we shorted the market at 277.75, 2,500 shares. Risk was 27.50. Exit was 272.45. Again, this kept going. I forget where the low of the day in this was. I don't know if it was 270 or 271. It kept going too. But this was a great exit. Profit was $13,250. How? Size, 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 2,500 shares, which is which is not nothing, but it's it's not like 10,000. But really the move from the entry point that we did this trade until the drop down, we caught it at such a good point. Because in the pre-market, before 9th area even opened, I saw that the market would fall. So my ability to predict that this stock market would fall on this day and Microsoft and everything else that we did allowed us to get in this trade very close, very early in the morning, between 9.30 and 10, but we got in earlier, earlier than 10, to get the trade, to get it, to get the momentum. Because again, the momentum in this case here was a short, which we shorted, to the downside. So you put the stop over the number when you short. You go exit underneath the number in a short. And again, how much money you make is dependent on the size. But even if you took what? Half this size, 1,200 shares, and held it, you could have still made, you know, six grand over that with 1,200 shares. And I do call the entries in the room, I give the stops in the room, we go over targets in the room, we go over exits. And sometimes I let the room go, like on this day, and I say, you know what? Take it into the close. I say, it's gonna fall into the close, take it into the close. And actually, if you did take this into the exact close in the market that day, you would have gotten out of the low in all of these. But it's it's chancy always if you hold something past even 3, 345, 350, 355, that's pretty late to hold a day trade. Any questions here so far? So why trade gaps? Why do I do it? The moves are big and they happen fast. That is a positive thing. You're also working part-time. Sometimes we trade for an hour, half an hour, two hours. You can do it from home, which again, as I explained, is very convenient right now, especially this year during COVID. And the moves do set up fast. If we don't get in the trade by 10 o'clock, I'm probably not doing anything that day. Now, I ended up calling Amazon. It wasn't late, but it was like after 11. But either way, you know, usually most of the trades, I'd say 95% of the trades we do are between 9.30 and 10, and they move pretty quick. Why gaps? Because they move big and they move fast. And that being said, I don't trade every gap. What do I mean? We were having this discussion today too. You can't short every down gap and you can't short every up gap. You can't go long every up gap and you can't go long every down gap. So how do I figure out what to do with it? Because things gap all the time. I don't play every gap that exists. Why? Because a lot of gaps aren't quality. So the whole purpose of my class and my rating system that I teach in the class is to determine the high quality ones. It's the quality gaps that I want to trade. The non-quality ones I don't trade. But you can even garner information from the non-qualities. What do I mean? Today the market gapped up. We'll just look at this here. This is a chart of the SPY. This was not a high quality long. While some people went long it, it was a piss poor long. I would have never gone long it, and we didn't. As you can see, it didn't go anywhere. It didn't go anywhere at all. So even things that are low quality, I don't trade them, but I take notice of them. So I do quality gaps. It's based on a rating system that is what I go through in the morning myself. It's a checklist, and that's what you learn from me in the class. It's a 14-hour it's a 14, uh, 14 class. But the thing is that when you're getting up in the morning, you can see these gaps in the pre-market. And that also, I think, is very valuable. Why? Because you can have everything lined up you want to do before the market even opens. You don't have to stress out. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to say, oh, my God, I have no idea what I'm going to do today. Before I get up, I know if I'm going to trade, if I'm not going to trade, and I know what I'm looking at, and I know what I like. If I don't see anything, we don't trade. If I like 10 things, then I have to determine if I'm going to just watch one or two, and if I might do both. I try to do one thing a day at least, but some days everything's going to go and sometimes we do more than one. So this was also on that same day, the 1028. Closed here, gap down, fell. So that was the SPY. We did puts in the SPY. Again, if you don't have a margin account, you could do puts. Cost was relatively cheap for this. The expiration, oh no, this was the day, I, this was Thursday. Hold on, go back. I did call, I could, did call other shorts that day too though. This is the wrong day here, sorry. 10.22, here. See that little guy? 
The puts I'm going to show you next, I called that day to expire on the day before Halloween, which was the following week. But I did call puts here too. My assistant didn't put them in the in the, in this class, I don't think. Anyways, these cost four dollars, which was relatively cheap considering it was a week out. You took them on a Thursday, okay? Twenty contracts and an eight thousand dollar risk sold at fourteen fifty. Beautiful profit, huge profit, twenty one thousand dollars. And again, it's the return on investment. So say you bought five, you spent two thousand dollars, you could have made five thousand two hundred fifty bucks, okay? This is taking it into the drop that was on Wednesday. Taking it here into the drop. Theoretically, though, again, talking about a low of the day exits and everything else, and Galahad, I'm glad you're here to hear this. If you would have held it the last day, you would have made more money. Again, how would you have known that? Would it have made any sense to do that? No. This was up so much here. Do you know what I mean? But one of the crazy things about the, how well I've been calling these trades and these moves is you, they're all having follow through. You almost don't have to manage them at all. Even on Thursday when the market rallied, every the, all those trades were still up. You weren't up as much as you were uh, on the Wednesday, but you were still up. And if you held them into the last day, you actually made more. I mean, that is so unusual. And I, I did not do that because I didn't think it was right to do that with this trade. Uh, oops, where did it go? Because it was up so much on Wednesday, but you could have made more if you held this trade into the into Friday the 30th, which is insane. Because you can see here, this was a 342 strike. And where did the market go? It almost came to 320. So this was 20 some dollars through the strike on the last day. So it had tremendous value, way more than four bucks. Is everybody with me? Crazy, crazy. But that's, what it, that's, that's how well I've been calling these things because we're getting good timing. And sometimes I'm early. Like, you could say, well, we were early here. Yeah, but that's when I saw it. So that's when we did it. So I do the trades when I see them. It's better to be early than late. Any questions here so far? Let's go over the cues. This was the sell-off here that happened, in, in, and then this was the same day, the 22nd. We did the 284s again. You could have held them into the last day, which is insane. Cost was 480. 15 contracts, risk was 7,200, sold at 12. This was worth more on Friday. <laughs> Completely insane. 284, profit 10,800, more than 100% return on investment. Again, let me go over and show you where this went. Again, almost, well, not quite $20, 18, 17 through the strike in the last day. It's insane. Insane. And again, we did this over here on Thursday, the week before. But here I thought was a beautiful exit here. And look what it did. That was crazy. And if you took a smaller risk, again, these are options. 480, five contracts, risk is 2,400, sold at 12, profit 3,600. So if you want to sign up for my options newsletter, you don't have to take the class. I think taking the class helps you on the letter, but it's not a prerequisite. If you want to learn my system, then you learn it. You could do options. You could do day trades. You must do the class in order to join my live trading room and get the calls like I called the day trades. Like this one here, back here, is a day trade. So this is a day trade. The other ones here are newsletters that get emailed to you if you sign up. These are options trades. You can do both. I will say the most successful people in the trading uh, room with me and in the uh, that are students of the class, the most successful people that are making the most money are doing everything. They did the class. They are doing the options. They are in the room. Okay. Any questions here so far? But, you know, I think the market's hard for a lot of people to read. I've gotten better at it over the years. I've, I've been perfect this year at reading it, quite frankly, particularly recently. So take heed to the things that I said earlier tonight when I started out talking about the election. Think about what I said, because I'm sure that I'll be right. And, you know, if you really don't understand what to do here in this type of market, then step aside. One thing you don't want to do is lose money just by taking pot shots at something. You should never have the attitude that's a 50-50. When I take a trade, I feel like 100% conviction it's going to work. That's how I feel. I actually feel that way. And I use that to help me trade well and go after something hard. And even when I see the market like back up against my direction or a trade, if we're in something, it doesn't, it doesn't sway me in the opposite direction or set me off. I believe so much in what I do, and I think that's the power of how I trade and, and how I'm able to call the trades and see things also. But it all has to do with the gaps. 
Everything is gap based. That is my strategy, but it's the rating system that tells me it ahead of time. And, and it's really a sustainable way to make money because you get gaps all the time. You get gaps in the market nearly every day. Uh, stocks have gaps a lot during the year. And in quarterly earnings seasons, we're in the last earnings season of the year, you get a lot of gaps. And again, things get played. You get momentum, you get volume. All of that stuff makes for good trading. Okay, some of the biggest moves that stocks have happen the days that they gap. And again, if you were gonna take, you know, a thousand shares of something and go long it, and if it rallies a dollar, that's a thousand bucks. You make money as a trader by chunking it out. You pull money in and out, in and out. You take it, pull it out, take it, pull it out. And that's why, you know, it's been an active year, but you wanna be active if you wanna trade. You're gonna make the most money being the most active, okay? One of the things I think you need to trade also is you have to have a strategy that's reliable, sets up often, almost every day, and have a good risk reward payout, okay? Now here was this other one too we did. This was the SPY. This was, again, the same day. I knew the market direction would be down, so we shorted everything. Entry was 332.15. Risk was 27.50. Exit was 327.30. And again, this fell further too. I don't know where this went, 320, 620, 325, something by the end. But this was a $12,000 profit plus, because again, 2,500 shares, you take it, Get the drop it's a big move this is we did do options in this too my assistant didn't put this in the in the class here tonight but you could have if you couldn't have afforded to take this at this price point then you could have done just done the put like you could have bought a put a 332 put a 330 put you would have made money and something like this you would have made money at any put that was underneath the strike of it falling because when you buy a put which is other market trades I showed you in the options, you are, you are betting that it's, it's a short, you're betting that it's lower, it's gonna drop, okay? I'm not doing fancy dancy options. I'm doing things that are always in the directional bias that I'm reading in the gap. How is it going to go? Is it going to get bought? Is it going to get sold off, okay? Any questions here so far? So, you know, this year was a strange year, I think, for everybody where people are reevaluating their life. They are trying to decide if they want to stay in the job they're at. Some people have lost their jobs or trying to find other ones. Some people are working two jobs. Some people um, are still working. They're working from home, but they realize they don't like what they're doing and they want to find something else to do. Some people are also realizing that they want to, so people are moving. People are moving. People are moving out of cities. People are fleeing New York right now. Um, I, it's just one of these years where people are really sitting back, trying to figure out their finances, trying to figure out their housing situation, trying to figure out their life. And that's not a bad thing. It's really, it's, it's not a bad thing. It means change. And it means change is being forced really upon people. And that's not a bad thing because yes, it gives you an opportunity for what? It gives you an opportunity to change your life for the better. And that's how you have to look at it. And I say, when people come to me and take the class, and my class is not cheap, it's $7,000, it's worth every penny, but it is an investment that you're making in yourself because you're really going to change your trading. The things that you will learn from me, you will never learn from anyone else. I can guarantee you that, and every one person that's done my class would tell you the same thing. What I do is very unique. I personally am a very unique person in the way that I look at the market, which is one of the reasons why I'm able to predict things in the future. Now, part of that is experience, doing it for a very long time, but I am telling you that the people that control the market are what I call institutional money. They're hedge funds, they're banks, it's a whole conglomerate. They move the market, they're there, they're in charge. They're called the power money people, okay? And they're there, even if you think they're not there, they're there. In other words, you may not see them there in a day, but they're there anyways. And I'm able to see who's in charge of what's going on because I'm reading the gaps. Not just the gap on the live day, but the previous ones as well or something like today, where I see what happened in the gap up, okay? So having a strategy that can really pinpoint that institutional money, where it's gonna go, if it's in control, who's buying, who's selling, that just makes such a big difference in your trading, and it makes it a whole lot easier to trade when you can do that, because you just go with that money, and that's how you make a lot of money without really having to do anything, okay? So I designed my system and called it a golden gap. What is a golden gap? A golden gap is a gap that moves in the direction of the gap. Who makes golden gaps? Again, institutional money makes and creates these gaps. 
and it's real. They're real, okay? In the case of a bullish gap, institutions are buying the stock. Therefore, the stock moves higher in the trading day. In the case of a bearish gap or a gap down, institutions are selling or shorting the stock. Therefore, the stock moves lower on the trading day. How do you make money in the market? You've got to be in the right direction. You won't make money if you're not in the right direction. So I developed a system over a course of three years to determine the odds. It's all, trading is all about odds. Not every trade that I take is works. Sometimes I lose. But I win more than I lose, which means that I'm profitable. And that is obviously your goal, okay? It's probability. There's high odds when I rate something. It's a 26-point rating system. If it rates 20 points or more high odds, it's going to work. What's low odds? Low odds is it rates low. It rates under 20. Like if I had rated, I didn't rate it because I knew it wasn't going to rate well. But if I had rated the market gap up today, it would have rated low. Would have probably been under 15. Might have been under 10. It wouldn't have rated over 20. So I wouldn't have gone long it, and we didn't. So when you have a system that helps you, who's going to come in and buy this or who's going to come in and sell this that's what the rating system depicts okay and again all of this you're doing in the pre-market the pre-market that's the time and you could get up as early as 4 a.m if you really want to some people like galahad lives overseas some people you get up early in europe you can see what's going on very very early okay you could raise gaps as early as you want some people rate them at night they live in california i like to do it in the morning okay i get up early not 4 a.m., but I get up about 6, okay? The Golden Gap system that I created is a professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of this system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. And this you must do, and this you must be strict about, and I do it too. As many years as I've been doing it, I do it. Now, I can eyeball something and say, oh, I don't really like it, or boo, 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 but I still go through the process and I still rate it. And that's how it becomes part of you. And that's how you're able to take the higher risk amounts, like $2,000 or $3,000 in a trade. That's, that's not nothing. That's a lot of money to risk in a day trade, quite frankly, okay, for many people, despite, no matter what the size of your account is. Day trades move fast. They move quick. In fact, you can make really good money just risking even five, dollars $600 a trade. That's plenty, okay? It depends how uh, well you learn the system, and also, again, your personal risk assessment. So I use the 26 point checklist to help me figure out what trades I wanna take. Now, we usually get three to five a day in earnings season. Right now it's earnings season, so we get a lot. non earnings season, I'd say we get three to five a week, okay? And, and I just go through and we do as many as I see that I like. Now, but the day before the big sell off, the day before, actually this was the 20, 26th, not the 27th I'm seeing here. The diamonds we shorted, this is the day before, two days before, but it was the Monday of last week. It was a week ago. Last Monday, the 26th, we shorted the diamonds. This was the bar here. Closed here, gap down, sold off big. So the entry in this, we did it 280.10. Stop was 280.65. On 5,000 shares, risk was 27.40. Exit 274.14. This was a huge, huge trade. Over $29,000. It was not an option even. This was a day trade. Now, let me go over here and show you this on the chart. Just so I can show you this gap here again. We were in this as puts as well. Yeah, it was a 26. So, again... Do you see the entry we got in that? Look at the high of the day. I mean, we I couldn't, this was an expert entry. High of the day was 280.39. It was insane. And look where it did. It was a beautiful trade. This continued lower as well. And boom, boom. In fact, this came down here and hit the 200 period moving average on Friday. Well, it touched it Thursday and Friday, but you know, and the QQQs on the SPY did not. So this diamonds had a big sell-off. And again, Boeing has uh, is part of that and the Dow. And then also, I think that that had the drag on it too. Any questions here so far? That was a week ago. But the bottom line is that knowledge is power. With, with, with all the knowledge in the world, you have the power to be able to trade and make money. Even if you have a small account, you could turn it into a big account if you have the right knowledge, because knowledge is power. Can you imagine if you knew for sure who was going to win the election? 
what kind of power that knowledge would give you. So, you know, knowledge is power. That's why trading on a whim, not having a system, not, not having any clue at all is dangerous. You're just destined for failure with that type of thing. You've got to have the right knowledge. The money will come with the right knowledge. It really, really will. And I think a lot of traders just don't uh, put, the, put the correct level of importance on learning and having the right knowledge before they place trades onto the market or risk money. They just don't, people don't get it. And to, for the life of me, I don't know why. Now, we were in this before all these things. This was like, I don't know, two weeks ago now. This was another trade we did in the diamonds. We did the 284s. It expired that same week. Uh, cost was 220. Risk was 7,700. Sold at four. Good trade. 82%. I'm typically looking for 50 to 100. Some of them have been way more than that we've done lately. But this is a good trade. This is a good trade. Again, that was shorting the, di the diamonds. And again, any questions here, let me know. But I think it's important to have a plan of action. Plan of action every day. Plan of action is strategic. Like I have a plan of action for tomorrow morning. And then I'll see what's going on tomorrow morning. I'll get up. I'll rate my gap. I look at the daily chart. That's how I determine what I'm trading. Then I use the baby charts, the one minute, to determine my trade entries, and we trade live on the day. I, I do trade with size. I've been trading for a long time, like I said, but I think if you're new or you're a beginner or you're new to the system, then you trade with a small size. There are a wide variety of people in my room. Some people are taking one contract in the option. Some people are taking 100 shares. The amount of money that you make is, again, depends on how much size, but you're going to lose if you don't, if you take too much size for the size of your account. Like say you have $5,000 in an account, you can't risk $2,500 in a trade. That'd be 50% of your account. That would be absurd, okay? So you have to be normal, thoughtful about it, common sense, okay? So I teach a class once a month. It's called the Golden Gap Course. It teaches a strategy and how to trade gaps. The course teaches a 26-point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. And this is also how I call the market. The course also teaches students how to play the stock on the debt. And the course teaches students chart analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level. And I think this is the best thing about being with me and then also being in the room, quite frankly. Like, we had a great discussion today in the room. So I just go through the whole checklist in the morning. This is the meat and potatoes. This is the strategy. Again, this is what you learn from me. And it's all gaps. Everything I do is gap based. I'm trying to find the highest quality gap that I can each and every day. Most of the trades that I do, do have follow through. Okay. Not all, but most. Sometimes we'll do a trade one day, we'll get stopped. I'll do an option the next day, it'll work. Sometimes I'll do a trade two days in a row. Okay. When I invented the system, I didn't plan for that. But that again is part and parcel of the whole thing about institutional money because you get that, so it's not surprising. Just like the sell-off every day last week was not surprising to me either, okay? And this is a benefit because if you wanna use this system to do swing trades, options, long-term investing, you can, and then the active day trading, okay? I get this question a lot too. I teach regular people. I mean, uh, I'm teaching some of the most regular people you could have ever meet that some that have had no experience, some that have had experience, it's all across the board. Age groups, women, men, all of it. I think that once you're kind of bitten by the market bug, you never get unbit, <laughs> kind of to say. Uh, you're bit and then you wanna make it. It's just like, how are you gonna make it? But you won't make it without a good strategy, that's for sure. And you can have the best money management, the best discipline in the world, it's gonna get you nowhere if you can't figure out what to trade and what direction. And I think that that's one of the reasons that traders have been getting hurt. And, and, and even in September, not just in October and September too, because of what people were doing with their trains and where they thought the market was doing. And people like to buy these dips in the market and it's just the wrong thing to do, but people do it. People do it all the time. So for me, uh, you know, gaps is it. And I'm lucky that it's been a good year. I feel like my ability has... Uh, but that my, I, my ability has actually strengthened through this period of COVID as far as my chart reading ability because, because I've been very, and even this week, like I'm so focused to make sure that we get it right um, because I know that it's challenging. And sometimes that, that really, you know, that, that gives me an edge. Like 
that hyper-focused position sometimes when I'm in that mode really does give me an edge. Some people, when they're under pressure, they can't take it. They just collapse. With me, that extra oomph, it, it actually helps me. It helps me go up to move to the next level. Any other questions here? So you definitely need to do the class if you want to learn how to do it. It will give you clarity on how to train. I will teach you what conviction is if you don't know what it is. But the commitment really has to do with you. That's why when people come to me, again, it's the entire weekend, which is a commitment of your time, the money and costs for my class, which is a commitment financially, and then obviously you have to be committed to train. You have to get up early. You have to be in the room. You have to be there. So the Golden Gap course is a complete system to use to trade, and it is a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and place stocks that are professional bearish gaps. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. It's November 7th and 8th, which is this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Again, good time to trade because it's earning season. Email me at melissa at stockswish.com if you want to sign up. Cost of the class is $69.99, and uh, it has been a very interesting year. I anticipate it will be a very, very interesting week. I'm running a special through Election Day, which is tomorrow. So if, you, if you've been following me for a while, you're on the marketing list, you know this. You would get the Trends course free, the Options newsletter and Trading Room free through the end of this year um, if you sign up by tomorrow. And the Trends course is Tuesday the 10th. So it's classes Saturday, Sunday, and then Tuesday is the Trends. Any questions from anybody about anything? Good lecture tonight. Definitely reach out to me if you have questions. I think it's important to empower yourself to trade and really to make decisions about your life. If you're thinking about doing this for a career or thinking about doing it part-time or on the side or if you're retired, email me at melissaatthestockswish.com. Email me if you want to trial at info at stockswish.com and we will see what happens tomorrow. We will see what happens the rest of the week. Let's look at the market here tonight. Oh, we're not really moving much tonight. Any questions from anyone about anything? Okay. Have a safe night, everyone. Stay safe wherever you are. Go out and vote if you can. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs>